So I am here with David Ogman. Right. Did I pronounce it right? I should have asked right. before. Damn it. Um, uh, here is how David and I connected, and it's important. Um, well, first, we have no idea how we connected, but um, <laughs> we are both swimming in the sea of Jewish connections. Um, it's like a Jewish geography game. Um, and uh, it's somewhere between Boca, Hewlett, Brooklyn. It, it all has come together. Um, University of Florida, most importantly. Um, and also I posted something on my Facebook page asking for people who were, who were actually doing well in this pandemic, um, in part because I'm not, as my listeners know. I mean, I am, it depends on the day. This has been a particularly bad week. I am, um, let's see, we stormed the castle, not we, they stormed the castle. Tuesday was it and then one day this week they stormed the castle um and then that night we found out my son's favorite teacher had died of COVID and then the next day I found out that I had been scammed out of twelve hundred dollars by someone claiming to be a COVID widow and that was just this week so um so I really wanted to reach out to people who were benefiting from uh quarantine with no judgment obviously and um really just to find some happiness um david doesn't have happiness to offer but he does have hope um and that i think is almost more important than happiness so um uh david first of all let me give out your website uh it is uh savingjordan.org correct that's correct okay um i took off my glasses for vanity reasons <laughs> this one because i'm old um tell me about jordan tell me about you know your journey, journey, yeah. oh, journey, non-bachelor type journey. Right. So um, Jordan's a four-year-old. Um, he's five-year-old um, now. When he was four years old, we got diagnosed um, after searching for a diagnosis for four years and doctors just telling us that they didn't know what it was and they just thought it was um, a developmental delay or maybe just kids grow up and develop at their own pace. And we knew something was wrong, especially as Jordan became, you know, two and wasn't walking and talking and he's three and he's not walking and talking. We always knew something. Was but can I pause you? You're pregnant because sure. I read your website. You're, okay. The pregnancy was normal. The no pregnancy problems. was normal. And the first year was normal. And the first year was normal. The Jewish genetic screening didn't come up with anything. And for the, if we have any, <laughs> for the four non-Jews that listen to my podcast, um, uh, Jew, uh, specifically Ashkenazi Jews, it's probably Sephardic also, and I'm just, um, you know, lapsing on it. But um, right. when two Jews of a similar descent get married or get, decide to have babies, we go through genetic screening um, to find out about, I guess the main, the main one I think of is Tay-Sachs. Tay-Sachs, right. right. That's what right. I do. Um, because these are diseases that are very bad. And we, the idea is that now that we have the ability to screen for these things, we want to know. Um, and then if you, if, if for Tay-Sachs in particular, I think it's two, it's two recessive genes. So it can only come together when, um, both, you know, both for the Ashkenazi Jewish genetic diseases, typically both parents have to be carriers. Fantastic. Thank right. you. And so if we found that out, you would, they would, I'm going to say they would simply as though genetic, you know, manipulation is simple. Um, but there are, there are things that they can do to screen, but in this case, this is something this is something that is so rare that I couldn't find a Wikipedia page for it. Um, sure. Afterwards, sure. I'll go back and double check and make sure, sure. I didn't just miss up the letters. Um, and But two things, I, I vote you give it a better name and I vote you create a Wikipedia page. Oh, both are, yeah, both are in the works. Right now, the disease doesn't even have a name because it's so rare. Yeah. And because it was only recently discovered, actually discovered after Jordan was born, which is why it wasn't in the Jewish genetic screening panel. Right, and it's okay. called T T E C P R two or Tech P R two. Tech P R two. Okay. Um. So when which is just the, the name of the gene. I mean, we have th tens of thousands of genes. It just happens to be one gene that is either um, you know, faulty, defective, or or missing. So basically, the scientist who solves this riddle is going to get the name. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I slowed you down a little bit, but so it was in a second year or like the end of the first that you started noticing. Yeah, we started noticing that um, 
Jordan just wasn't saying any, um, any sounds or any words or wasn't getting up from crawling. Um, and we just knew something was going on, but the doctors just said, you know, just give it, give it time, give it time, give it time. Uh, but then by age three and four, we said, you know what, we need to do further testing. We go to doctors, nobody can figure it out. We finally go down to the University of Miami um, to do a whole exome sequencing um, test. Explain what that is. So it's just further, it's just a very, very expensive uh, blood test where they really look deeper into anything that any doctor can do with, with a microscope in, in a uh, like in a pediatrician's office. So it's technically, um, and it, it's, it's, and it it's, tests for pro, it, it's like a protein coding for the regions of the human gene. Right. So that's what they're, that's what they're looking for in this, in this test. And um, we go down to Miami and they do the test and we go home. And a few weeks later, they give us a call and they say, we, we found something. We need you to come down um, and sit down with us. And so we go, we rush down to the University of Miami. We sit down with the neurogeneticist there. And they said, we found something. Jordan has a very rare um, Ashkenazi Jewish genetic disease. It's so rare that it was only recently discovered. It wasn't on the testing panel. Um, it doesn't even have a name. And there are not even many kids out there that have been identified with it. Um, Can I, I have, I'm, I'm going to, I'm, I'm interrupting because I'm slowing yeah. you down and doing it on purpose. Okay. Um, uh, so, because you're not going to lose the interest um and so we don't have to rush it and also because i kind of want people to feel it and right. i i um and i hope that doesn't make it painful for you because i think of you course. go on autopilot for, and i would as well yeah. um so uh are are either you or your wife in the medical field no my wife is a state attorney and she um represents uh children in the foster care system and how about you? And I'm a wealth advisor so that's, and studied business and she studied you know, law. Um, so neither of us know anything about um, medicine. Yeah, buy but marrying a lawyer, oh, bad move. I married one too. Mine's a lawyer and a psychologist, which means he, he argues the shit out of it and then blames it on my mom. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but so um, this is a real... I say adventure in the worst way that you guys had to go on to finally get someone to pay attention to you. Right. Do we have any idea how many um, children in the world um, have been, you know, have this or? Right now there's, there's more kids that are starting to be identified, but there's only about eight to 10 kids right now. Around, eight to 10. Eight to 10. Um, that's amazing. And so the upside of that is that when they do find the cure, we, uh, you know, you don't have to wait in the long line. Right. Um, but when it's a matter of how, how much, how much money power people are going to get behind it. Right. Based Absolutely. on those numbers. So, right. um, so you're at the university of Miami and they tell you this and, um, I'm not going to make you relive the day because I think as parents, we can all understand the horrendous, you know, um, horrendous slash what the fuck moment. I swear a lot. Just ask <laughs> my daughter's Hebrew school tutor who yes, uh, heard me, you know. Um, but so how did you know where to go next, what to do? Um, so we actually asked a neurogeneticist when they said you, your, your son has this rare disease and they said there's no cure, um, there's no treatment um, and there's no hope. And that's where they actually said there's no hope. And they said there's no hope because they to figure out how to cure this, it takes millions of dollars. It takes scientific teams to devote years to the, to the science. Um, and it's just really not possible for to have such a small population of kids and have any um, pharmaceutical company or biotech company or university want to stop everything they're doing and devote millions or tens of millions of dollars to curing you know just a few kids and you basically said hold my beer yeah <laughs> i uh i actually grabbed jordan and we ran out of the hospital and didn't want to hear that story no um and started calling from the moment we left we just started making phone calls to boston to harvard to israel to everywhere we could to universities that we knew um, 
worked on uh, rare disease um, and just started making calls and they all kind of said the same thing who, you know, nobody has, uh, you know, these millions of dollars and it's just a team of scientists sitting around waiting to, to do this. They're all working on, on larger diseases that they can sell to big pharma, like, a, like to sell to a Pfizer and a Merck where they can make billions of dollars. That's, that's the goal of, of you know, biotech companies. Of course it is, yeah. They come up with some blockbuster drug that they can get everyone um, on and- um, You mean like a vaccine for COVID? Yeah. <laughs> so um, that's kind of where we were. Um, is that that's how they left it. And unfortunately for all of the so many rare disease kids out there, they're told the same thing, is that there's no treatment, there's no cure, and there's no hope. And just take your kid home and love him. And they said, just, you know, hug Jordan for the next 12 to 18 months um, that he's here with you. So that's kind I, of- I have was, to take a moment not to cry because, you know, it's that awful. Was, that was the advice that they gave us is, is take a moment, hug him for the next 12 to 18 months that he's, that he's here with you. Not, yeah, I, I think that surgeons and obviously, um, obviously the smarter the doctor, I think they definitely at some point there has to be a bit of a sociopath, narcissistic self-preservation removal. Right. Um, and yet that's not something you tell a parent. No, it's not. It's not what you tell a parent. But also, you know, this, the, it's just really, unfortunately, how it is for so many rare disease uh, families. I mean, there's, there's not a cure, uh, you know, currently for, for Tay-Sachs or these rare Jewish genetic diseases that have been, been around for decades. Um, so we understood that, but we just, you know, I just didn't want to take no for an answer. And I wasn't willing to just go home and, and say, you know, we're going to lose Jordan um, without putting up a fight. Yeah. And, you know, but also um, just real quick on a psychological level, like I fucking tell people to go home and 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 pray to buddha or tell people to you know rub uh essential oils on their tell people to do something that makes them feel less out of control and awful right. because not everyone is going to be as smart as you and your wife are and um as proactive and um most people don't even know the hospitals you know yeah. like the the main like you mentioned Israel and I was like that was brilliant I would not have thought of that but um, you know so instead you went home and started trying to kick ass in the right directions right absolutely and this was in uh, okay so Jordan was born in 2015 this was in 2019 um, uh, the world ended in March 2020 exactly so only, that, only a what, few months yeah. later. Oh, it was two months later. Okay. It was only, well, it was a few months later after we, well, what happened is after the University of Miami gave this, this news, we called up to uh, Boston and we actually flew up to Boston. We met with scientists and doctors up there who pretty much just confirmed what, what um, the diagnosis was, that there's no cure, there's no treatment, and the kids aren't going to survive this disease because it's going to lead to respiratory failure. Um, there's toxins building in the brain. Um, there's a piece of the brain missing that, that that's supposed to connect both sides of the brain and it's missing. And right, I wanna, can I, can I explain that in human language? Cause this is what I was um, texted you about. So um, basically there's two, I came up with two, two key parts of this, which is um, the autotomic nervous system is what affects your involuntary functions. And so that is part of what gets affected by this, correct? Right. And then the other thing is something called autophagy, which most of us, me I have I've never heard of but autophagy but yes exactly thank you autophagy yeah. and tell us what that is so autophagy is the function in, in your brain that that uh, cleans the toxins every day um in uh, tech pr2 disease um the autophagy process is impaired so it's not cleaning and uh, refreshing um uh, your brain from uh, the toxins that are building and these toxins build and eventually the brain will just um We'll just give up and give out. And um, that's what leads to the body just stopping. And so the other part of that is that um, autophagy, uh, my, my Google definition is that it's, it cleans the damaged cells. It allows the you know um, damaged cells to leave and then newer set healthier cells to regenerate. And this is missing. So it's like yeah. a broken vacuum cleaner, blah, 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 broken vacuum cleaner for lack of a better word. And yeah. eventually you're just literally, you're spewing out dust as you try to vacuum it up. Right, in a child's brain. 
Yeah, I, I wasn't trying to make um, light yeah. of that at all. I was really just yeah, trying it, to- it just, show, it just shows how difficult it is to even comprehend how to, how to fix that. that That's problem. why I went with a vacuum cleaner because we've yeah. all seen a vacuum cleaner and it's, right. you know, we've all exploded one, I, I hope. Um, so yeah, and so you're watching, you're, you're hearing these words and watching your adorable son. Right. It's similar to like what would occur in Alzheimer's, Parkinson, ALS, MS, any of these neurodegenerative diseases, but in a little kid um, who isn't able to talk and doesn't have the words to tell you, you know, what's going on, how they're feeling, how they're doing. Um, and they also don't have um, the comprehension to understand what's going on. So we can't even explain to him uh, because there's an intellectual disability that comes with the disease. Um, so you're not even able to explain to the kid what's going on. You can't say you have a rare disease or that you're dying of this disease or we're meeting doctors trying to cure you or that you have um, this impaired autophagy process in your brain. So the kid doesn't understand it. Um, and there's really no feedback you're able to get as well. Do you think you would, if he could understand, explain the dying part? Um, yes, because we've explained to our um, seven-year-old daughter um, I mean, she hears me on the phone all day. Um, I did not, you know, I did not realize that you had another child. Yeah, we have a seven-year-old daughter. Yeah. And so how is she handling? Um, she's really mature about it. And, you know, she hears me on the phone talking to doctors. She hears me speaking um, about fundraisers and speaking to donors and speaking to supporters and speaking to scientists. And she, you know, we brought her up to Boston. Um, so she was at you know, Boston Children's Hospital with us. Um, she comes to Jordan's therapy. She goes up to the University of Florida with us. Um, so she, she's there and she, you know, unfortunately she's in, in the middle of it and there's no way to hide it from her. So we, we told her and, and she's been, she's actually been very helpful to us to um, work with Jordan and just keep Jordan, you know, happy as she can, and, you know, play with Jordan and, and try to give him uh, as normal of his life as he can. Yeah. You know, in between the poking and prodding of, uh, you know, doctors and scientists and the MRIs and blood draws and everything else um, that he goes through in a, you know, his daily life. So now I'm sad for your daughter. Congrats. I'm going to cry over two things. Um, I, I am certain you guys are giving her a wonderful life, uh, but I'm oh, yeah. sad that she will, that barring a miracle, that she will one day suffer the loss. Right. Um, but um, you mentioned University of Florida. Um, I went there my freshman year. I disliked it because I wasn't into football. Left, went to Georgetown, never went to a basketball game. And now I'm a huge football fan, so go figure. Oh, that's um, awesome. Yeah, um, but I still hate Florida football fans. You guys are the most annoying fucking people ever. It, um, it, it's like everything to us, right? I know, and it's just like, for that reason, I just always root against you guys. Right. But, um, but to let's bring in the hero here. The hero yeah. is UF. Yeah, so, you know, we were up in Boston and they told us, you know, Jordan's not going to survive this disease. They said it leads um, to respiratory failure and um, Jordan, there's no way Jordan's surviving this. So we go back to our hospital, we go back to our hotel that night in Boston after leaving Boston Children's Hospital and I'm Googling universities and, and I said, you know, what? Well, let me try the University of Florida. When I was at the University of Florida, I just remember they had this big chance hospital but I don't really remember what was there because I was busy, like, like you said, you know, going to football games and, and all that kind of stuff. And I didn't realize that there were scientists on the campus. I remember um, that hospital too. What's, it's called Shans? Shans said? Hospital, right. I remember, I remember uh, it well. And I remember there being times when my, uh, I had relatives that had, you know, that went there because it's, oh yes, Gator fans are annoying, but it's a really damn good hospital. The hospital is amazing. Yeah, uh, I knew the hospital was amazing, but when I was in school, I didn't, didn't realize care. Yeah. That, right, and I didn't know that there were scientists there at that time. You know, twenty five years ago um, from today, that were pioneering an AAV gene therapy cure for these types of rare disease, and it was very, very, very early. I mean, no places were really um, on the cusp of this technology like the University of Florida was in Gainesville, Florida, of all places. And what they were doing at that time, you know, 20 years later, um, they were able to perfect what they were doing so that the science is now here today. If Jordan was diagnosed with this disease 20 years ago, you know, the science wasn't there. Um, but finally, um, they're starting to kind of figure this thing out. 
which is great because I thought the only thing there was between like campus and the airport was taxidermies. Places, so. <laughs> that's about what that's yeah. right. That, that's what the drive to the airport is like. Um, um, so tell me, first of all, you said something that I don't know what it is, which means that our listeners aren't um, AA. Oh, so AAV gene therapy is just the type of cure that the university is trying to develop for Jordan. Um, so um, there's different types of um, treatments or different types of cures. University of Florida um, has been um, pioneering this and working on this and they've utilized it in uh, children suffering from other rare disease and they've had success. And um, they think that it's the safest and most effective way to go. And they're also the only university or, or uh, scientific institute or hospital across the country or actually across the world that's interested um, in doing this. Um, once we brought Jordan, so I called him from Boston actually after we were told that, that there was, you know, there's, there's no hope for Jordan. I called Gainesville and they said, you know, come directly to Gainesville from Boston. Come, come, come see us. We have this doctor, Dr. Barry Byrne, who's the director of the Powell Gene Therapy Center. Um, he came from Johns Hopkins and he's an MD, PhD, and he's just very passionate about devoting his entire life to saving kids. And by the um, way, everyone should be as passionate, but yeah. from rare disease. Um, yeah, exactly. So we um, we left and went to Gainesville and we brought Jordan there and Jordan was in his little gator shirt and his orange and blue and the doctor just fell in love with him. And, and you um, and your wife both, did you guys meet there? We, we met on Jade 8. Okay. But we didn't meet at the University of Florida. But did you both go or just you? Yeah, we both went. Stacey went to the University of Florida for law school and I went for undergrad. Thank you. Okay. And that 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 of course helps. Um, but also when it, the scientist saw Jordan, he just fell in love with Jordan. Jordan did a gator chomp for him, which That's was just so amazing cute. that for a kid that has no coordination and can't walk without stumbling and falling um, and can't balance uh, without without uh, you know falling over everything and bumping into walls. Sure, you taught him it. one thing, gator <laughs> fan. <laughs> the, one, the one thing came through was a gator chomp at the precise moment that the doctor took a, a, a step back to think that this is something you can do. And Jordan did the gator chomp and That's the doctor just said, we're going to do this. But then the doctor looked at us and said, guys, a lot of people come into this hospital. Um, this costs millions of dollars. I'm going to need you to come up with, I need you to tell me right now, but you can be able to raise millions and millions and millions of dollars for um, the cure. And we looked at him and Stacy and I looked at each other and the nurse was behind Dr. Byrne and she's shaking her head up and down and saying like, say yes, because this is your only chance. If you leave here, that's it. So we said yes. And the doctor said, great, let's get working. How, um, much, how much do you know how much you've raised so far? We've, we've sent um, nearly a half a million dollars to the University of Florida in, you know, just since, you know, pandemic. Which, so, so that's, so when, did, when did you go to Florida? I'm just trying to get a, an idea because it, it's an amazing time frame of that you've turned this around. And so this right. was like January, February. Yeah, this was actually the end of 2019. Right. So 2019, like 2019, we went up there and then started putting together the foundation and everything um, like early uh, 2020. So really all in this year during pandemic, we were able to really rally everyone we know in our community and uh, just tell everyone the story and share the story and get it, get, uh, you know, savingjordan.org. We tell everyone um, about about that website and everyone goes on there. They take, they, they watch the video of uh, Stacey and I talking and, and everything we've done for Jordan and science and everyone's just moved by it because, you know, most of the community here in Boca Raton is a, a Jewish community and, and, and they say, you know, this could have happened to any of us. All we needed is two parents that have uh, be, be carriers and this could have been our anyone's anyone's kid and that's yeah. why everyone's really moved i am not the watching the video i am <laughs> going to donate i am do going to give you money i am not watching the video the either. video is very difficult to watch and i watch the video every day over and over and i just cry and cry and cry and stacy and i watch it and we, we cry ourselves to sleep but the video just helps us um come to terms just yeah, or and motivate us and help, tell us to not give up and tell us just to not forget for any second of the day and just to keep pushing for Jordan. Um, and that's and that's really been helpful to us is just to devote everything we have uh, to this. 
and uh, everyone, all of our supporters do as well. They don't just donate. They don't just go on and give eighteen dollars. They give, you know, they give eighteen dollars, and then they share it with hundreds of friends, and they tell friends at the supermarket, and they tell their family that they're speaking to, and and everyone wants to cure Jewish genetic disease. It's it's horrible. Um, it's horrible. It's they're horrible diseases, and and you know everyone thinks that that what we learn from Jordan's cure, if we can figure this out, is going to be translational to cure other similar diseases. So it's not like we're just trying to save one kid. And I tell everyone that I'm not giving up after I save one kid and all the other Tech PR two kids, but for all the kids affected by these rare neurodegenerative diseases, um, we think that that what we're doing is lay, laying a, a groundwork and a framework of um, how to figure this out for. Well from the, the little bit of science I understand it is because I it's it has to do with remove I got this from your website it's like removing one protein and replacing it with another right right can you do a better job because I sound like a moron that's 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 really what it is and okay yeah that's really what it is and you know and then and they tested it in, in a mouse to see if you know how it works because there's so few kids to to really test it in and to make sure that it's, it's safe and effective um kind of like with the COVID vaccine you see that the world has spent probably hundreds of billions of dollars. Every scientist in the world and every big company, every big pharma company is trying to figure this out. Hundreds of billions of dollars to put into research and scientific teams around the world and nobody could really figure it out. It took them, it took them a really long time. And even now that they figured it out, um, I mean, they, they, they're still not sure how effective and safe it is and everything. It's kind of the same process, but we only have, you know, our scientific team at the University of Florida working on this with a limited amount of funds that we're able to send. So Right. I mean, you know, we're competing against, we're competing against competing against the world. You're um, competing against the pandemic also. I mean, it's it's going well, but you're also right. competing for resources, I feel like. Yeah, we're competing against resources and most clinical trials or many clinical trials around the country have been shut down. The universities and the hospitals just they say, "You know what? We need to focus on COVID. We need to treat our COVID patients." and just there's limited funds and there's limited revenue and we just can't do this right now. Um, the University of Florida hasn't stopped. I think part of it is that we sent them a ton of money. The, um, we've also um, you know, promised we're gonna send a ton of money more. And we've also created a, a huge awareness for the University of Florida and for Jordan and everyone's rallying behind them. And, um, and it's become um, a huge endeavor and a huge project and just a lot of hope and excitement around this. And we've done that during pandemic, which normally most people would just shut down and say, you know what, we got to be on hold and we can't do this. And how are you going to do it? And we just never stop and just keep pushing. Right. I mean, you have the attention of all of us in front of our computers. Well, yeah. So the positive aspect of this, and, and I think it's even more positive if there wasn't pandemic, is that we wouldn't have the eyeballs on social media all day. And everyone is on social media all day. Even if they're working, they're still, you know, peeking at their social media, you know, all day long and they're seeing my posts about Jordan and I'm sharing it and sharing it and they're donating it and they're sharing and they're, they're commenting. And I think just having the entire world um, available and accessible to, to share the story to has really been um, amazing other than um, the alternative would be everybody would be going about their lives and they'd be at the mall shopping or whatever we used to do. Um, I don't, I don't recall. I don't know what day it is. So, right. I mean, I know it's 2021, but I don't know what day it is. Right. Um, a difficult question. Um, how much has Jordan uh, deteriorated in the last? Um, so with the disease, you actually, Jordan has actually progressed. But what happens is that is, is the disease, it's not just one where you just go straight down in terms of progress. You actually um, go up, you peak, and then you like hit a uh, uh, a trough. Um, so what happens is you start to improve and we're doing therapies all day long. So we're doing Zoom therapies three days a week. Um, then in the evenings, we take him to the beach and we make him walk in the sand and he falls and at least he can't get hurt. We take him onto the golf course and we make him go up hills. So we're doing therapy and just pushing him all day long, nonstop. Um, so he's actually progressing in terms of walking. He still, he has a few words. He can't really talk in terms of you know sentences or really get his point across um and his cognitive skills and intellectual dis disability are still there that's not going to improve because the brain just it just won't um but it's a disease where one day he just won't wake up because of the respiratory failure so 
what we're what we're what we're worried about is you know we when he when he goes to bed you know we're going into his room and listening to him breathe and you know putting our hand and our ear on on his chest and on his mouth to hear if he's breathing and how many times he stops breathing in the middle of the night so that's what we're really worried about is just every night when we put him to sleep we're just worried if if, if he's going to wake up um it's really what what the disease is is how it, is how it works which from what we know and what scientists which is knows. you know i think it's something that every i'm definitely not gonna be able to hold my my tears so <laughs> sorry i feel like when you know when um well i don't know if you were as neurotic with your daughter as i was with my firstborn uh, my son but definitely i was terrified you know like even past the sids age even past all right. of that right. even with the reminder that like our parents had blankets in our bed and we're like, we lived, you know, um, but eventually those of us who are not you and the other, you know, eight to 10 right. kids, we get to um, release that fear, release right. that anxiety. And so to think that you've been going through it for five years, right. yeah. Um, I want to like put in an expletive to like diminish from my tears, but sure. um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. That yeah. sucks. And yeah. you just messed up my mascara also. <laughs> um, I'm sorry about that. But um, yeah, so yeah, the, the, the most difficult part is the, the days are difficult, of course, is kind of, um, you know, the, the behaviors and, and um, you know, the, the uh, scratching, pinching, hitting, um, you know, biting, head banging, trying to make sure Jordan doesn't put his head through the sliding glass doors or put his head through um, the wall or anything like that. And, and really why does that up. behavior occur? Um, there's a few reasons is that the lack of speech and, and being able to communicate and not being able to say what he wants. I mean, it, that's just very frustrating. And then just part of the, the disease um, just causes these behaviors. So you know, we have to make sure that the, a lot of the house we have it padded so that he doesn't hurt himself. We have uh, pool noodles all over on every corner of the house sure. so that he doesn't hurt himself. And, um, you know, we have furniture all bolted to the wall so he doesn't pull it down. And so, so, you know, during the day, it's difficult enough to make sure that he doesn't, he doesn't hurt himself and, you know, self mutilating behavior and stuff like that. But then at nighttime, you know, you don't even get a break um, because you're worried if, um, if he's breathing or not. So Stacey and I, you know, take uh, turns running into his room in the middle of the night to, to listen and see if he's breathing and we listen, listen by his door. And uh, that, that's really the, that's really the worst part is, is wondering if the kid's going to wake up the next morning. How is Stacy holding up? Um, she's, it's, it's, it's very difficult and she just cries all day long, um, wondering, you know, if, if the gene therapy is going to work, if this, if the science is there, if we're going to raise the money, What's going to be the outcome after the gene therapy? Will it will it save his brain so that he stays so that he uh, stays alive for a few more years? Will give him a few more years? Will he live into his teens? Will he live into his twenties? There's just so much unknown, and even the doctors and scientists really, you know, it's it's experimental, so no one really knows what's what's going to occur after it. And we're not looking for Jordan to be able to speak and be a you know Florida Gator quarterback. We just want to make sure that he that they um, keep him alive. Um, is it the, the, the lack of brain gross functioning? I don't know the proper word, but is there any possibility of that being, um, yeah, that, that could be, that could be restored. Um, the damage that's occurring now, they say supposedly that won't be able to be reversed. So it's difficult to comprehend like what damage has already happened and, and what that's going to be. But we, we we're, we're past that, you know, we're not, we're not saying that we want Jordan to be, uh, you know, be an athlete and, and run, a, run a marathon. And um, we just want them to stay alive and be with us. And, what, and if that comes with an intellectual disability, and if that comes with, um, you know, Jordan, uh, you know, not being able to walk properly and he's walking with a walker, walking with a cane, he's in a wheelchair, whatever it is that he's with us is what we care about. Um, whether he remains nonverbal, that's fine. Sure. Um, we just want to save him and have Jordan here with us um, is, is our main goal. Um, and to have him with you as long as possible. Right, and having with us as long as possible is, is our goal, and uh, that's what the that's what the scientists are working on now, is trying to figure, figure this all out. David, thank you so much. Can you uh, again tell people where they can go to uh, donate? I know there's two places. One is 
um, your website, which is right. called, repeat the name, it's going to go it's in my show notes. Savingjordan.org. And then this, our, the second one is the one you're going to have to, because it's it's a, right? It's University of Florida something. Well, so. yeah. Um, yeah, we have links directly to the University of Florida. If you, if you the easiest way is just to Google you know, uh, Jordan Ogman uh, UF, and that link will come up to direct, to donate directly to the University of Florida. Um, then we have GoFundMe, we have Hesed, we have so many different ways um, to donate and give, but really savingjordan.org has all the information about Jordan has a video about our diagnosis and, and kind of our journey and tells the, tells the whole story. And then lots of social media, uh, particularly Facebook, is, uh, has a lot of posts about Jordan. Um, and it's a good way to, to, to look and you know, comment and to share and tell to us find out more, sure. Jordan's story. Uh, thank you so much. Um, this was extremely painful and dreadful and wonderful. <laughs> it is. Um, and I, and I, I very much want to put this all over the place and see what we can do to get you some more money. So. It'll help. And it'll help so many other kids. Um, once we figure this out, this is going to help kids and we're not stopping once we cure Jordan, we're not stopping. We want to help the other kids that don't have the platform that we have, that don't have the network that we have and just don't have uh, you know, the strength and the patience and and, and everything, uh, the willpower to go out there and, and just keep fighting every second of the day. No, this is amazing. Thank right. you.